God wisdom. When I think about wisdom, there was a definition of what we see many years ago is that wisdom is about seeing things God's way. How God sees it, that's the way we supposed to see it. The way God receives it, that's the way we supposed to receive it. What God thinks, that's the way we supposed to. The way God look at it. Many times we want to apply our wisdom based on our own selves. But we are looking here and talk about a wise person. Wisdom. You know, many times I, I saw my son very young, many years ago, two years ago, and I said, Oh man, you have white hair in your, in your head. He said, Yeah, because I have wisdom. And uh, we got the idea that because I have a lot of white hair very well, and myself, I'm trying to put it to myself, that I have more no wisdom. <laughs> we associate wisdom with people who are older. We associate wisdom with the great grandfather who believe that they have wisdom. But wisdom is not associated, wisdom is not about that. You can tell a, a person that is, who, who is full of wisdom, who has a lot of wisdom, and it tells us, in, 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 look here, who, who is wise among you, who is sensible around you, who can use a common sense. How are you going to know a person? By humble. You see, when you understand the process of wisdom and see things God's way and, and, and understand things God's way, you will be able to know how to operate your common sense. And you will know how to apply with humility. Not because of our knowledge means being so wise. There are a lot of people have a lot of knowledge, but they're not wise. A lot of people are old. You know, some young lady, you might see this on videos and say, oh, this, this guy is expected to be old, man, he's supposed to be that way. And um, they will tell the old man, you need to grow up. You need to grow up. Wait, I mean, I'm very old, why do you need to grow up? But then I'm really talking about age. We're not talking about looks. We are talking about a character and we are talking about practicing that character or that knowledge and one of the ways we see how we operate that is the person that is among you who is humble. I tell that because my kids is here but I like to talk to his brother and his aunt. This is a brother of aunt and like that. And how she use words not to condemn people. But use ways how to bring people to their self and to understand who they are. And when they realize that, they feel condemned. So when Jesus was on earth, he, he never condemned anybody. He never bring down anybody that looked for help. He never insulted anybody that seeking for help. Or looking for his wisdom, his advice, or whatever, or whatever condition it may be. They have this woman, they caught up, he will commit adultery, they caught this woman or this person. And you know, so Jesus, all those things that they brought before Jesus, and to, to use him to bring judgment or use him to say something bad, he always says something good. He's there to protect and to defend. He's here to make us connect with ourselves. When Jesus talks to you, he will talk to you so you can do it to yourself. You see, sometimes you don't understand that when somebody tells you about yourself, if you look at it as a wise person, it's about building you up. It may not sound good, it may not sound right, or not the way you expect it to be, but let's examine it. Why do you call me? Dumb. Or why she sound stupid? Or why this? It's not that you might be stupid or you might be dumb. 
It's about, hey, let me, let me examine myself. Where I need to work on, where I need to process, how I need to understand, how I need to apply. One of my definitions as I go along this way, um, we're going to look at four different kinds of wisdom. You may see three there, or you may see two, but it's four. Wisdom to me, as I process it a couple years ago, I look at how God creation. Let's look at God creation. Then the moon stays where it at. The sun stays where it put. The water is stays where it put. The land is there where it's supposed to be. And all these stars and these Mars and these planets and all these things, they evolve and, and none of them fall apart. <laughs> it is the wisdom of God that put all these things together. And he shared those kind of things to us. I don't know who play, but I like to fly play. I don't know about how to fix a vehicle, but I love to drive vehicle. It's about balancing. Wisdom to me is a balance. Make things work in peace and harmony. It's about Make things work when it's speed up. You know, when you drive a wheel and then front of a vehicle, they have to give up and say brakes and stop. So you have to know all those things operate when to do it. Don't let some people, when they're supposed to brakes, they press gas. And that creates a what? Problem. So when you know, balance things and know how to apply things and when to apply, you can create problems. You can create accidents. And then, that's what I miss all by itself. But we are talking about this wisdom and, and, and seeing how it works within our mission. Because for you to go on a mission, you will have to lose a lot of wisdom. You will have to see things God's way. Because sometimes the way how people behave, we don't like the way how they behave. We don't agree with how they behave. So we lash them back. And God said that when you try to use your own righteousness or your own attitude or your own personality to present God's way, it doesn't work. Not because you're angry that person, you're supposed to be angry. Or say, well, I don't agree because I'm a Christian of God, I don't curse or whatever. The anger of man does not express the wisdom or the righteousness of God. So I don't matter how much you may be mad. The anger of man does not express or, or represent the wisdom nor the righteousness of God. You're going to see that next little one. And I'm just going to read it because all the things you just process right through. But let me look at verse um, uh, we're going to talk about 13 all we can talk about character. Your character is very important. Um, show it by how you humble. Some people, I don't know, you may have a false humility. Some people pretend to be humble and they know that. But deep down they're not humble. Deep down there's some, some things that some things that you know, the batteries them, or something that they don't, what they want to show off. You know, they'll show off in public, or all it, yeah, but at the same time, they tell themselves, they're eating up themselves. Religion has taught us how to hate ourselves. I don't want you to do that. But it teaches us how to disrespect God. That's not what God wants. They teach us how to fight against each other. That's not God's wisdom. They teach us how to be angry with things, with others. That's not God's wisdom. And then we are praying and say, well, oh, because I'm God's child, I'm a Christian. So we see that when somebody is, if, if, if the heart is full, we can understand the process here. When the heart is full of jealousy, and selfishness, do not brag or lie <laughs> over the truth. Full. Now, anger, bitterness, and jealousy in one process 
is good. But when it's full of things, you understand what I'm saying? When it gets to the place, sometimes some people don't know how to process the anger or, or process the jealousy. So they, they compress it. Oh, what do you mean? Compress and compress and pull it down. And then gradually, when a situation occurs, boom! Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean no. You know, when we find ourselves, that's not wisdom. That's not the wisdom of God. Okay? And I think I'm going to end this up. But, um, point I just want to make sure I get this out of the way. And then we're talking about, uh, this is by the verse 15. He, he gave us a nurse system and said, the kind of wisdom, that kind of wisdom in verse 14, Does not come from above. I want you to look at verse 50, how the process are. Okay? When we say four kind of wisdom. And I'll find how much you see here. I see four. How many? How many do you see here? Six? See two? That kind of wisdom does not come from above. It is earthly, selfish. And come from the devil himself. How many ways do you see there? So far, two, three. Three. Alright. So we gotta look at these. We, we gotta look at these. Uh, See? Now, it doesn't come from what? Above. Above. Ah. You see that? So why does it come from above? You're going to see that soon. But you see that above here? Yeah? That doesn't just mean there's a wisdom that is above. There's a wisdom that is above selfishness. There's a wisdom that is above earthliness. There's a wisdom that is above so this wisdom that is above is much more superior than these. Oh, yeah. This is the wisdom of God. You don't process it. Yeah, right, you have to see that term. But now let me take a little more on this one in R8. This is something that Christian like to use. Earthly things. Earth. I know they're referring to some of our behavior. Oh, that's the earth. Oh, that's the worry. You know? Worry. Oh, that's the worry. Let me leave. This is. I, I, I'm not going to look right this. In the book of John, chapter, chapter 3, 16, 15, 16, and 17, that's what worry is about. It's talking about. First John 3, 15, 16, and 17. It says that all that is in the world, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and what? Pride of life. That's what we consider world. That's what the Bible says about world. It's not the sound we sing, it's not the way we dress. Is that the way you look? Is that the way how you speak? Is how your character is connected with these things. Pride is something that God don't like. Pride of life. We talk about ourselves. That's is our self. That's the wonderful wisdom of ourselves. That's the way how we carry that. How I see things. So you, you, when somebody comes and asks for counsel or asks for help, the first thing you start to examine uh, is about myself. So I, this is what I do. This is what I think. This is what I feel. This is what I live. So it's all wrapped up about your own self and your own experience and the way you see things. Then you want to apply that and then again what? Human. Wisdom. 
You get that? Yes, more into that, but we're going to be brief in that area. We got something called the earth. Earlier, I talked about how God made revelation, made revelation through uh, the, this universe. This is earth or world. All right? Well, probably to think about if you see the trees, you see the flowers, you see the moons, you see those are things we look forward to get some of our wisdom from. The Bible says that for you to know what's going on on earth, this is a fun day. Right? For you to know what's going on earth, you look, look to the moon. The moon will detect to you and dictate to us what will happen on earth. Many times our parents may say, oh, tomorrow it's going to rain. Oh, you know, this is going to happen. What are you looking to? To the sky. And, and, and then we'll base our decision or base our wisdom on those things. We're supposed to plant at every time we plant and see, you know, plant and see, we need to plant seed. You know, certain way plant certain seed, that's the way you're going to apply or whatever seed you plant. But we also talk about planting seed in financial. You know, ways on what to put the seed or where God said, wherever your treasure at, that's where your heart will be. So we look at the things that is earth and how it works. A lot of times I always tell people, it's, I mean, I like to use simple things of earth. And, and the simple thing of this earth express and expose the wisdom of God. I remember when I was at school, we talked about there was big jets for the days before the days of Noah. Big, big, big jets. Well, we never see that. Why no one look at the boat? Because God didn't build the boat. Now, those things go up, they were in existence before it comes to revelation. Everything on earth is already in existence. God is not creating God is not creating anything else. He said there is nothing else to create. So God is resting at this moment. God is not working. He's resting. Who's supposed to do the work? The Son. Who's supposed to keep on doing, keep on working? The Spirit. We still talk about God. So we have seen that that oh God is uh, great all these unity things and this thing. So sometimes I tell us people, okay, the way we see things and the way we understand things, that's the way we, we we're gonna apply it. Is that so? So many times we come to the point we say, okay. When does the sun come rise? We say the sun rise from the east and set from the west. We can see that with our eyes. We can understand that with our eyes. We know that that happens. So what are you talking about? But when it comes to reality, that's not the way it works. So sometimes when the sun doesn't move, only the earth spins. According to scientists, according to power itself, only the earth, not the sun. So we get caught up in things that we see or we expect it to be. And that's where we operate. There is another wisdom we call a demonstration. Everybody know what the devil is. Now the devil wisdom operates in a different system. The devil wisdom is about destruction. The same devil will come to us, kill, steal, and destroy. He presents things to us that seems like something that you're going to do for your benefit. You get it? But then as the process go by, it looks good, it sounds good, but it does about what? Destroying you. So the devil, anytime you see the DC, that's why you say what? Jealousy, envy, bitterness, boastfulness. This is not from what? So the question is coming up here now. What is from the Lord? What is this wisdom that is from the Lord? Mm -hmm. 
So anytime you see trouble in verse 16, when you see people acting in some kind of ways so of jealousy and so envious and great out of trouble and be so angry and messed up, it's because of what? They are not using the wisdom from God. So the wisdom or the wisdom who give this wisdom is not inactive. What we see here in verse 17. The wisdom, but the wisdom that comes from above. Hmm. You see the difference in that? The wisdom that comes from above is pure, friendly, gentle, sensible, kind, helpful, genuine, and sincere. Is that the kind of wisdom that you want? Do you want to be kind to people, even though you're not kind to us? You see, God not tells us that people will be kind to you. He commands us to be kind to people. He tells us, you, be kind to people. You, love people. You, forgive people. You, help people. It's not about you. It's not about them. If they don't respect me, he doesn't bother me. If they don't come and say, thank you, darling, he doesn't bother me. If you don't come and say, oh, you're great. Nobody is ungrateful by yourself. So if you are giving something to somebody, and in the intention that they're going to come and worship you, then you are the best person. You are the only grateful one because it's not yours, it's from the Lord. And the Lord bless you so you can bless somebody. So you don't come back and say, Lord, thank you. Fine. So we'll be very sincere. You know, uh, this is something I want to really bring up wisdom. A lot of times people take sincerity with a mean face. You understand? So or if somebody is laughing, oh, you know, for real, or they're not true. Or you know, so we take some people like some people can lie to you and not that bring on the face. And they are telling you all the other things that sound so good for you. But at the end, it's not it. So that's not sincere. It's not about how you look. <laughs> it's about sincerity. It's about be real. What to say, what you're going to do, that's what you're going to do. What it is that you're going to do. That's what this is all about. It's about real. Be yourself. Every time I talk to you, be connect with yourself. Connect with yourself. Because sometimes you don't connect with yourself. We say one thing, we do another thing, and we say another thing. That's why it causes evilness. Because there's not consistent in what to say what to say, oh God said this, then later on God changed his mind, then later on it's a different thing. So those wisdom that is of God is genuine and helpful. When we make, when peacemaker plant a seed of peace, what are they going to read? Justice. Righteousness. In a different version I say something is different. But it's all about together. So when we think about wisdom from above, it's from who? That's God's wisdom. So we are looking at God's wisdom, earthly wisdom, the nature and all this stuff. We, we get our um, thing from. We are talking about earthly and selfish wisdom. The word all about me, myself, and I, and I feel how I think about myself. Then we are talking about the devil's wisdom. So, how many wisdom we see here? Four wisdom. That's why the book of John, chapter 4, he said, What? Test the spirits and see the death of God. So, we have responsibility. If you want to apply the wisdom of God, we have to what? See things 
God's way. And God is our peace. He said, do every effort you can to create peace. Praise the Lord.